Wi-Fi Sheep would like to say a huge thank you to all of you that kindly support us. Help us continue to bring new videos like this. Join patreon.com forward slash Wi-Fi Sheep from just $1 a month. Hello and welcome back to Wi-Fi Sheep right here on YouTube with me, Tom, and our very first video of 2021. If you're just joining us, then a very happy new year to you and also a warm welcome to all the new subscribers that have joined us over the Christmas and New Year period. Today we're going to do a video catching up on a subject I wanted to do as part of Christmas but we simply ran out of time. Now many of you for the past few years have been getting on at me to go and get a GoTech floppy emulator drive. I actually have one here over Christmas. I actually bought one for the very first time. What are these? Well, GoTex are originally designed to work with hardware and machines that needed 3.5 or 3.5 inch floppy disk drives. So things like some sewing machines, electric organs and uh, industrial type equipment that actually needed to use floppy disks to load data. It was figured out a few years ago that these GoTech drives could also be used quite successfully in older retro computers, dating from 8-bit machines right through to kind of 20-year-old PC and Mac systems. Here on Wi-Fi Sheep, we run BBC Micro as our main 8-bit computer of choice. Now, I've been reluctant to get GoTex because I do know they have a bit of an issue with certain types of BBC Micro. So in today's video, we're going to look at how to get these to work, how good they are. And also, if you're planning on using one of these with a BBC Micro, do beware. However, before we continue, it's a new year. And for your next electronic projects, why not take advantage of turnkey PCB assembly services provided by our partners at PCBGoGo.com. These include PCB manufacturing and assembly, component sourcing, functional testing, and IC programming. PCBGoGo's manufacturing bases are equipped with the most advanced production equipment, such as Yamaha pick and place machines, reflow oven, wave soldering machines, X-Ray and AOI testing machines, all operated by highly skilled technical personnel. PCB GoGo is a leading specialist in surface mount through hole and mixed technology PCB assembly and electronic manufacturing services, as well as turnkey electronic PCB assembly. PCB GoGo provides easy and cost effective online ordering services from prototype to mass production. So join now. Sign up for your free account today at PCBGoGo.com. Details and links are in the description. So my GoTech device I bought for around £40, that's about $75 US off eBay, and it was pre-programmed as a kit, pre-flashed, ready to work with BBC Micro. So it would accept the .ssd or .adl files that BBC Micro disk images use. The kit contained a 34-pin ribbon needed to connect the device to the BBC Micro's existing floppy port, and a power to Molex type connector used for the onboard power supplies that BBC Micros are actually able to give out via their PSUs, allowing for floppy drives to be able to be powered directly from the main computer. GoTech floppy emulators have a USB front port which allows you to use USB sticks formatted in the PC FAT32 format to load disk images directly onto real hardware. This is extremely useful, especially with the BBC Micro where I've been using previously MMC flashcard devices. The problem with MMCs is you have to compile a .mmb file, which means you have to use various bits of quite antiquated now old software which needs PCs and Windows XP or 7 to compile SSD images into a single file to then upload to a SD card. This could be a little bit time consuming and if you don't have access to now elderly or older PCs, this can become a bit of a problem. The GoTech system is fantastic because it means you can actually load any straight .ssd file onto a normal PC formatted USB stick and you can do that for a Mac, a Windows PC or even a Raspberry Pi. You can then take that USB stick, plug it straight into the GoTech and the BBC Micro will know no different and it will actually treat it as if it was a floppy drive. 
So the BBC Micro is a little bit different to other machines of the period. So for example, the Commodore 64 didn't contain any floppy data drive or hardware on board. So all the uh, drive hardware was actually on the external floppy disk drives, which is what made them rather expensive as they had to have their own processor and RAM. The BBC Micro, which was about a third more expensive at the time, actually had its floppy controller and driver hardware on board well in most cases let me show you under the hood of the most common type of bbc micro which you'll find here in the uk and this is where we hit a slight problem so a quick crash course in bbc micro identification this is a bbc micro model b and it's one of the most common type you can find in the uk in fact i'll go as far as that it's probably one of the most common retro 8-bit computers you can still pick up off auction sites or even find you know on the street corner still so there's a lot of these hanging around the model a b and b plus all had this form factor which mainly consisted of mechanical keyboard without a numeric pad and a separate or clip-on plastic uh, top banner piece here and also what we nickname the ashtray which some of them have them punched out I was like this one have a adapter plate on. There's a little sort of plastic part here, uh, which could be missing. It's not a big deal if it is, but that's what we call the ashtray. So there's your common BBC Micro. Now, not all these machines actually had the floppy controller on board. This is what made the BBC Micro so expensive, was that unlike other systems, it actually had its internals for floppy drive on board. However, there's no actual way of A, identifying the model or B, knowing if it has without doing some further investigation. So, first of all, the Model B Pluses, which had the newer 1770 floppy drive controller, which would work with Gotex, are easily identifiable because they actually have the 64K written on the badge. So you know instantly what it is. Those machines are not that common even in the UK. The more common Model B, which is what this is, is identifiable if you can turn the machine on, if you can turn the machine on and on the screen it reads BBC 32K, you'll know it's a stock Model B. If underneath it reads Acorn DFS, you'll know it has a floppy controller on board and then it should load to basic. If you just get the line basic straight under BBC Micro, then you know it hasn't got an installed, either hasn't got a floppy controller or it hasn't got the actual DFS ROM drivers. If it's reading BBC Computer 16K, it's likely it could be a rarer Model A, or it could be a Model B that's not reading its RAM correctly, or has been switched incorrectly. The only way to know is to actually take the machine apart and have a look inside. So obviously make sure you're powered off. I've taken the screws out of this one so we can just lift the top shell off, and we'll take a closer look underneath. So this 1982 issue Model B, which is an issue three, uh, you can tell that by, if you look here, it's got it printed on the uh, silk screening on the circuit board, so it's issue three. And what we want to check for is floppy controller. So hiding underneath this ribbon here, I'm just gonna pull the keyboard forward. There's two chips, um, this one here, which you can't see particularly well, if I just zoom in, this is the earlier Intel floppy controller, and it will be marked on with Intel and a date code of something like, uh, here we are, 1978, so it's quite an old part. That means you have got a floppy controller on board. You also need to check you've actually got the DFS ROM on board. So I lifted the keyboard away because hiding underneath the keyboard here are the actual onboard EEPROMs that are effectively the drivers for the computer. So on a Model B, they're stacked as you need operating system, basic, and then this is DFS version 1.20. And you need all these three to have a system capable of reading programs off a floppy drive. These other two are new additions, so the MMC sets for using MMC SD cards with this computer, and the NULA is for the new graphics card. We've covered all this in previous videos. So if you've got blank spaces here, don't worry. If the machine is reporting as a 16K, you can actually check if to see if it is a 16K or not 
by just above the ram bank here there's a little um, jumper and it should be set to the north position there's three pins here it's not very easy to see the three pins and it should be set north that is 32k mode if this jumper is missing it will load one bank of 16k and report back as a 16k machine or if this jumper is set incorrectly into the south position so that's joining these two here not the one up here it will then load the other alternative bank of 16k so make sure you've actually got that jumper in the correct place and it should be facing in what we call the north position and i've just missed that there we go should be fitting in the north position there if you do have a machine with an intel floppy controller and either version 090 or 120 of the dfs rom unfortunately this is not going to work with a gotek controller and it won't work with any modern-ish 3.5 inch floppy drives either uh, well we'll still power this up now with the gotek and we'll get so far we can catalog directories but we can't actually run any software without needing to upgrade and the upgrade is a replacement chip here or sort of here rather and it also has to replace the floppy controller and there's two chips under here which are hiding because of the ribbon uh, which also need changing out and you can buy kits to do this and um, I said, I'm tempted but uh, yeah we'll have to see yes so the eBay listing I bought my GoTech from did state that the BBC Micro had to have a floppy controller and it said something along the line very cleverly how this is worded but it was something along the lines of a um, compatible DFS ROM so if you've got a stock machine that actually has got an intact floppy controller it's unlikely it's going to work properly you're going to need to upgrade it to the at least a 1770 or 1772 controller and appropriate DFS disk image that's slightly annoying now if the BBC Model B is your only BBC Micro you want to run this with, you're going to have to try and buy the upgrade parts, which you can buy new upgrade parts online. Luckily for me, I do also have the BBC Master 128, which is a slightly later machine. Now, the Master had its floppy controller and its driver software actually pre-installed and fixed as standard on the motherboard. And it can support the later 7070 DFS and also the advanced disk filing system ROMs. So for this demonstration, I'm going to switch over to using a master because I have a number of master systems. So it's not so much of a problem that the GoTech doesn't work properly with the Model B. So these things actually work fantastically with the GoTech drives. Now looking underneath, as with the Model B, you can see we've got the same Molex type plug straight off the PSU and the first port here is the floppy drive. So we can go ahead and plug in our GoTech one. So the GoTech is back on board. It's a little tight on the side of the unit on this one. There's not a lot of flex in the cable, so it's right up against it on its side, but we're back now connected to the master. So let's power up. Okay, and um, as you can see, it's slightly different. It now says Acorn MRS, that's Machine Operating System, and it's loaded a floppy driver, which is the Acorn 1770 DFS, and of course, BASIC is loaded. So we should be able to catalog a drive again. And this is uh, revs this time. Now, this should work with a shift break, and you can see it now loads perfectly fine. And we're loading straight off disk images, which I've loaded up on my uh, USB stick. So we'll just go quick practice. Uh... Oh, <laughs> yeah, I could normally drive bad in this. There you are. Oh dear. But it just shows it does actually work. And if we flick through disk images, we can catalogue what we've got. Uh, Eurivium. BBC Micro version of Eurivium.
again, rather difficult to play when you're sort of trying to get leaning around a tripod. But uh, as you can see, all works perfectly fine. So in conclusion, do I think the GoTech is worth having? Well, I think they're really useful devices for a number of different computer systems. Especially here with the BBC Micro, it means you can just take files very easily off your modern computer system. You've then got USB access for the very first time directly to your original 8-bit hardware. As I said, the only thing to watch out for, which isn't really publicized that well on the eBay listings, is that these don't work properly with the stock Model Bs. You will need to update your floppy controllers. But overall, I'm really pleased with the performance of the device. Um, I think it works really well. And also it allows your original 8-bit hardware to act as a bridge machine in its own right. We showed bridge machines using sort of vintage PCs before to act as a go-between to write floppy disks. Well, imagine now if you have a dual drive like I do have, and we could swap out a 3.5 inch floppy drive for a GoTech, and then we could actually then transfer data directly from original five and a quarter disks straight through to uh, virtual files that we could then back up. So it is a wonderful bridging solution as well, especially if you have older data locked on disks that you want to get off onto modern formats. Well, that's just about it for this video. So as always, thank you so much for your company. If you haven't done already, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you real soon right here on the channel. Until next time, look after yourselves and bye for now.